Howdy! So far, all of the numbers we have been working with have been of the numeric data type, which means they are represented as floating point decimals. Also, our computations have been performed across arrays or a discrete set of values. In this video, we'll demonstrate that there is more to MATLAB than this. We can create symbolic numbers, which do not suffer from rounding error, and symbolic functions, which are continuous and behave like what you are familiar with from algebra class. The steps to creating a symbolic function in MATLAB are simple and shown in this slide. First, we need to define symbolic variables, which will be used in the upcoming function. This is done with the sims command. After sims, we can list as many variables as we want to define each of them as symbolic. Next comes the function definition. Two syntaxes are shown here, both accomplish the same thing. In the first, we use the simfun command. As input arguments, we must pass in the formula, followed by a vector that lists the independent variables. On the left side is the dependent variable. The syntax below follows what many of us know as function notation. On the left side, enter the dependent variable first, and then list the independent variables in parentheses. On the right side, define the formula. Now, this example uses variable names we are used to from math class, x, y, and f. But they could be any names we want, following the rules of normal MATLAB variables. After defining a symbolic function, how can we use it? Here, we see a newly defined function, f equals x plus y, all divided by 2. Then we compute the result for inputs of x equals 4 and y equals 6. This produces the expected result of 5. When we look at what appears in the workspace, we see something new. This cube icon indicates a symbolic function or variable, and the description indicates that f is a function, while the others are variables. What difference does this make? In this example, we pass in inputs of x equals 4 and y equals 2 thirds. This produces an output of 7 thirds. MATLAB shows this as a ratio of integers because that is an exact representation. This differs from the numeric data types we have been using, which represent numbers as floating point decimals. To convert this to the standard double type, use the double command as shown. Notice how this changes the display in the command window. Also, notice the difference within the workspace. Let's look at a simple, useful example of applying a symbolic function, plotting a quadratic function, and solving for the zeros. The setup is shown here. First, we define the input variables x, a, b, and c as symbolic. Then we define the output variable curve as a function of those input variables. This follows the standard general format for a quadratic equation. Next, we'll define functions that can compute each of the zeros. These are taken straight from the quadratic formula shown here. The plus or minus symbol in the formula indicates there are two zeros. So this first function uses the plus sign, the second function uses the minus sign. With this setup established, we can now input any set of a, b, and c values to make a plot and or compute the zeros. Here's a complete script that does this. The top half is the setup we just explored. Then, I define specific numeric values for a, b, and c. I'm careful to use different variable names so as to not overwrite the symbolic variables a, b, and c. Now I use the fplot command to plot the function. I can only have one independent variable, which is x. The other inputs are fixed parameters, the numbers that I just declared. The result of this command is shown here. This function has a limitless domain meaning that x could range from negative to positive infinity. I set the limits of this plot by defining the minimum and maximum x values in a vector within the fplot call. In this example, x ranges from negative 3 to positive 2. To compute the zeros, I simply pass in the same a, b, and c values to the pos0 and neg0 functions I had defined. I leave these commands unsuppressed in order to view the outputs directly. Here we see the results. Again, we note that these are stored as exact rational numbers rather than decimal numbers. Let's look at the same example within MATLAB. I'll run it with the same input parameters as before. 
Now, on the plot, with the grid added, we can see that the curve crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 3 fourths and x equals 2. Now for a change. I'll change the a value to positive 4 and run again. We immediately see the curve flip around and the new zeros displayed. This illustrates the flexibility that comes with well-defined symbolic functions. The final thing to notice is how strange the zeros appear in the command window. First of all, these are complex numbers, which is why the imaginary i is present. Secondly, MATLAB works very hard to leave these as exact representations and not as a floating point number with a rounding error.